Hi guys, I'm in a nature reserve in a place called Oogschaest and it's near the small city of Leiden and the reason I'm here today is I got a comment uh, for my video which field tested the Canon EF 400mm f5.6 which is not stabilized and I was shooting it with my uh, Canon 70D crop sensor body uh, and the comment was, I think this uh, lens belongs on a full frame body uh, because of the challenges with ISO and li low light. And I'd also like to see how this unstabilized lens performs with a body that has IBIS, uh, in body image stabilization. And that question really stuck in my mind. I'll put the uh, person who uh, ask that question up on the screen there and I'll wait for this jogger to go past he's gone past so what I've done is I uh, went to budget cam in The Hague and I asked if I could hire a Canon R6 which is a 20 megapixel uh, mirrorless camera Full frame mirror, mirrorless camera, and it's uh, and I'll just wait for this jogger to go past, and they've gone past, and uh, it's got IBIS the R6. Um, it retails for around 2,500 euros, I believe, or thereabouts. So I thought, just try it out and see how the 400 millimeter EF 5.6 uh, does with a inbuilt uh, stabilization in the camera body. Budget Cam didn't have the R6, so uh, they kindly loaned me this R5 instead, which is not really the kind of camera I'm interested in because it costs four and a half thousand uh, euros, which uh, is totally out of my budget. But since uh, I had uh, a few days where I had time to do this, uh, I went ahead and took the R5 at the same price, which was pretty good. So it'll be a bit of fun testing out these 45 megapixel uh, images. Anyway, we'll just uh, head on into the wetland and see what uh, images we can come up with and test out this lens with the uh, mirrorless R5. It's been pretty interesting here in the wetland. There aren't too many birds around, which is understandable for this time of the year. It's October, so I think a lot of them have migrated south. But the reason I'm here today is to test the combination with the 400 EF and the IBIS. I came across a great grey heron that was in the water, and a lot of the time it was standing still. It allowed me to get quite close. Uh, before moving away and I was able to test uh, a lot of the shutter speeds on this camera with that heron. Uh, I got all the way down to a 60th of a second on this bird and I think from the back of the camera those shots looked relatively uh, 
the shop. Uh, so I moved from a sixtieth of a second all the way up to one thousandth of a second, uh, just seeing how uh, it performed. Of course, you know, the heron is having little micro moves, and I'm jittering about with uh, my hand holding style, so it's not foolproof. But it is a good field test to see how well it will do uh, hand holding with a moving bird and a, a photographer that probably hasn't got the best stance. We'll move on and see what else we come across. distance I saw a kestrel but it was hovering over I think uh, a vole and then it dived so while I was on the ground I used that time to get a little bit closer and uh, then the uh, kestrel went into a tree and I was using the uh, eye focus animal eye focus with the cluster AI servo and uh, it was kind of getting mixed up with the tree so then I, I put it into spot focus uh, and I got I think I got some fantastic shots of this kestrel sitting in the tree and then it flew into another tree and landed and I got some more shots of that Hi guys, it's me coming uh, from the future one day after I took those photos in the wetlands and I just wanted to clarify one thing. You may have noticed that uh, all the photos were JPEGs that I've shown on the video and I did actually set the camera for JPEG and RAW. Unfortunately my uh, 10 year old MacBook Pro uh, needs its, its operating system to be updated in order to handle the CR3 RAW files of the Canon R5 and I haven't been able to update my operating system uh, yet so uh, I've just been using the JPEGs and I think for the image stabilization tests uh, and the autofocus tests uh, that's fine I did want to do a dynamic range test uh, but because I couldn't uh, extract all of the beautiful detail from those raw files, uh, then I'll leave that for another time. Anyway, I just wanted to clarify that guys, and uh, back to the video. I think of the R5 in combination with the 400mm unstabilized lens. Uh, I was going for the R6 uh, but I got given the R5 because the R6 wasn't available. I think it's the perfect uh, wildlife combination. Uh, 
the camera that is. The lens, uh, it could do with an extra one to two to three hundred millimeters, but if you don't have that, then uh, you can crop in using the 45 megapixels. Um, that autofocus makes capturing uh, birds in flight so easy. It's just a matter of almost just pointing and pressing the button and more likely than not you will get some real keepers. The image stabilization I was able to uh, capture, I, I swear with the grey heron that while standing up and focusing on its eye I was able to get down to a 60th of a second. Uh, I'll look in Photoshop to confirm that but uh, yeah I'm pretty confident that at least one of those shots at a 60th of a second with a 400 millimeter lens uh, was sharp. So that is uh, a real win in my view um, and I pretty sure that the R6 has the same image stabilization as the R5. Uh, what do I think overall regarding the R5? I think the price is absolutely prohibitive. Um, you do get a camera that is head and shoulders above a lot of other cameras in regards to wildlife and sport though. Uh, the autofocus, the shutter speed options, fish just jumped out of the water and that ibis. Uh, if you're getting static subjects like uh, that heron that I uh, shot then uh, that autofocus is just, uh, that uh, ibis is just going to be an absolute winner. But uh, yeah the quandary is uh, if you're a wildlife shooter what do you go for if you can't afford a $4,500 or Euro camera? Uh, you could go for the R6, but it's only got that 20 megapixels. It's not a crop body sensor either, so uh, when you do crop, you're going to lose even more resolution. So I'm not sure what the, uh, what the answer is to that question, but uh, that's given us a morning with wildlife on the Canon R5 and the 400mm and it was most enjoyable and enlightening. Anyway guys, if anything in this video was helpful to you, I'm almost at the 1000 subscriber mark now, so if you can just get me over that mark I'll be able to monetize this uh, channel. So if you found anything helpful, hit the like and the subscriber uh, button and I will see you next week. See ya!